The 2010s were a decade dominated by comic book movies. Now that we've made it to the year 2020, here are my picks for the 10 best comic book movies of the decade. Hi, my name is Sean, and I love to talk about movies way too much. With that in mind, go ahead and join me down below in the comment section. Share your picks for the 10 best comic book movies of the decade. My list isn't the right list. It's just my list, and I would love to see yours. One thing before we get started, people ask me all the time, where do I get my posters? Where do I get my Funko Pops? And what equipment do I use to create my videos? There's a link down below in the description for kit.com. It has lists of all that stuff. I'm updating it this afternoon, so you can have the most up-to-date information on my posters, my Funkos, as well as what gear. I use. With that said, let's get started with some honorable mentions. First up is Captain America Winter Soldier. This is a film that took the MCU in a more serious direction with kind of a political spy thriller film. It's an absolute internet favorite and one that I have a blast with. Next up is going to be X-Men First Class. This is a film with a fantastic 1960s aesthetic, kind of feeling a little bit like those James Bond films from that era, but while being an X-Men movie, I went into this movie so skeptical and every time I watch it, it absolutely wins me over. Then we have Black Panther, possibly the most mature film in the MCU as it has a very morally complex narrative inside of it that has something to say where the villain is absolutely villainous in nature, but by the end of the film he actually has won our hero and his nation over in his direction just a little bit. And finally Edgar Wright's Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. This is just such an odd, quirky, highly stylized film that takes kind of a more obscure comic book, gives it this video game vibe and the way that it's directed and creates a film that is truly unique. If you haven't seen it, go check this movie out and let's get started with our top 10. Kicking off our top 10 is Josh Trank's underrated masterpiece, Fantastic Four. This is a meticulously crafted, deep character study of four fantastic people. Just kidding, wanted to make sure you were paying attention. Kicking off our top 10 is Guardians of the Galaxy. Kevin Feige took a risk on this one, both by choosing to adapt such an obscure and weird comic book series, as well as by picking James Gunn, whose filmography up to that point in time was like working for Troma, hard R films, and then screenwriting Scooby-Doo and Dawn of the Dead. He didn't seem like the obvious pick to do a big comic book blockbuster, and he absolutely knocked it out of his out of the park. He brought in his own odd sense of humor into the mix, and it makes for one of the more organic and funny films inside of the MCU. It has an absolute fantastic soundtrack inside of it, but the real magic here is that it's one of the most personal films inside of the MCU about this odd group of people brought together, and you just fall in love with each of them as individuals, but you love them even more as a group. James Gunn might not have made the biggest film on this list, but it might have the biggest heart. Number nine is Deadpool. After years and years and years of Ryan Reynolds trying to get this movie made, some test footage was leaked to the internet, the internet went bananas for it, the studio greenlit it, and then it turned into such a massive hit far beyond anyone's expectations, and so much of that just comes to everything coming together perfectly inside of this film. First off, you've got an actor being cast in a role that he just seems designed to play, that plays into all all of his strengths, all the things that he does well, and that's what this part is. Then you have some writers who have a sense of humor that goes so well with what he does. He has this motor mouth, he could just shoot off this quick wit, and they have this own similar ADHD style in their storytelling, put it together, and it just seems like the perfect combination, and then Tim Miller comes in, tells the story himself, and is able to give like a serious side to very jokey material. The narrative might be fairly straightforward in nature, but that just sets up all of these great sequences, memorable moments, and of course, fantastic one-liners from Ryan Reynolds. It's a movie that's so much better than it probably should have been. It looks more expensive than it actually cost, and it's one of the most entertaining films on this list. Next up is Man of Steel, one of the more divisive films on this list, as it seemed like audiences and critics were pretty well split on it. One group thought it was a pretty cool reinterpretation of the Man of Steel for the 21st century, and the other group thought it was a drab, dull, misinterpretation of the Man of Steel that was far too cynical for a character known for being about hope. 
It's in my top 10. Obviously, I'm in that first group. When I first watched it, I didn't really know how to interpret it because it was so different from the Superman that I grew up with. But every time that I've rewatched it, I've appreciated it more and more and found new layers and depths inside of it. People think that it's just kind of a shallow film all about a slam bang third act. I think it's there's a lot more to it with that as you look at the study of what's going on with Clark Kent, Superman, as he's dealing with being from two different worlds. There's themes woven all throughout it. And of course, it has a fantastic score from Hans Zimmer that's one of the best scores of the entire decade. Put it together and you've got a movie to me that does have a lot of emotion inside of it. It has fantastic action. And then you've got a star making performance from Henry Cavill and a score that even right before I started this video, I amped myself up by listening to the score for this film. Number seven, Captain America Civil War. What I love about this film is that it's a perfect example of what the MCU has done so well, which is build a world with a bunch of different characters that have different experiences, different values, different worldviews, and they're all in a shared universe telling stories together. So at the core of this story, it's a movie that you could not do it if you didn't have all of the MCU that came before it. Both, we need to understand Iron Man and his fault and the mistakes that he's made, as well as Captain America and what he's seen all around him, and then the adventures that they've had together inside of the previous Avengers films, because of that, you come to a point in time where they see two different paths that they need to take. So the drama, the conflict inside of it feels earned. And that makes it so much more potent for me as it plays out. Of course, it's so awesome to see the airport sequence with all of our comic book heroes just duking it out. So many great one-liners inside of it. And then a third act showdown that's because it's two friends fighting each other, the most personal inside of the entire MCU. Once again, just a great film, an example of what I love about what Kevin Feige has done. Next up is Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. What I absolutely love about this film is that it finds a way to both do something very unique with animation in the style that it's done that feels like a comic book at times, the use of frame rate inside of it with different characters to animate it in a way that both of this distinct and unique as well as show the difference between characters. All of it progresses animation in very interesting ways. And at the same time, it's a movie that does things we've never seen in a comic book movie before because it's an animated film. The animation, the comic book genre are what feed off each other to create this unique experience inside of this film where you have all this multiverse type stuff that if you tried to do that with Spider-Noir and Spider-Ham in a live action film, it wouldn't work but you can do it in animation. And so the filmmakers were just brilliant in their ability to kind of pick the best of all of this and create something that uses both genres to the best of their abilities. Add inside of it, it absolutely is a film jam packed with heart for multiple characters inside of it that have these arcs that happen inside of it, incredible action sequences. I just love that this movie exists. With that said, let's do a few more honorable mentions. First up is going to be Wonder Woman. If it was just based off the first two acts, this would easily be inside of my top 10. I love Gal Gadot's performance and just how charming she is and innocent while at the same time strong. She has great rapport with Chris Pine. Third act, I thought kind of pulled it down just a little bit for me though. Then we have Shazam, a movie that was so much better than it probably should have been. And a large part of that is because it's actually about family inside of it. Of course, you've got the juvenile humor that works. I love the way the special effects were actually done inside of it, but it's that core adopted foster family. That's the thing that kind of glues this film together. The Dark Knight Rises, the third film in Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy. It, for me, this is a movie whose ambitions were probably a little bit too big and that dragged it down a little bit. But it, when this movie does work, it is a powerhouse. This is, of course, a master filmmaker taking on a fantastic character. And the last 10 minutes inside of it are some of the most emotional that I've had in the theaters in the past decade. And finally, we have Kingsman, Matthew Vaughn's take on the spy genre. And much like he brought this kind of a specific aesthetic to X-Men First Class, he brings that even more so to this film. It's so cool. You love these characters. You love this world. The action is great. 
great, it's funny, very solid film. Bringing us into our top five is Avengers Endgame. The Russo brothers and Kevin Feige did it. They found a way to craft a movie that actually lived up to 11 years of hype. It has tragedy, it has people dealing with the consequences of their choices, the scale is massive, the cast size is massive, and that third act is easily some of the best fan service of all time and it's earned, it's not cringe inducing, it's just fantastic and led to the most exciting moments that I had in the theater this year was when I watched that opening night with a crowded room who are crying at the portal sequence, they're screaming out loud when Captain America is grabbing Mjolnir, incredible, incredible stuff. As I've mentioned before, my big issue with this one is I just thought they went too far with the Thorbowski plotline, and he drifted into self-parody a few too many times, and that knocked it back for me. When this movie is awesome, it is best of the decade, but I do have some faults with it, and that's why it's only at number five. But it is at number five in a decade filled with movies that I absolutely love. And then we have Joker. In a decade filled with comic book blockbuster spectacle films, this movie went in the opposite direction and made a character study about the tragedy of Arthur descending into madness and turning into the Joker. It's such a distinct film inside of the genre because it is so different from all the other movies on this list, as obviously the villain is the lead character inside of it. And while we're rooting for Arthur to succeed and find his confidence, we're watching it with dread in our hearts as he descends and turns into the Joker and that's where he finds his confidence. It's a movie with a fantastic performance inside of it. I love the unreliable narrator and that you don't really know what's true at the end of the film. And just, it's a film that got people talking. And that's what movies are supposed to do. That's one of the things I love about it is that we could discuss its merits, its message, our interpretations of it. That is great filmmaking. Real quick, before I go into my top three, remember to share your picks down below in the comments section. We're going to disagree. That's the fun part. Let's just keep it respectful. Also, if you want more content like this, check out this playlist right up here. It's got my end of 2019 end of year list. So I got my best comic book movies of 2019 list, best movies, disappointing, surprising. Also, you can check out in here my picks for the 10 best movies of the decade or my 10 favorite movies of the decade. If you've enjoyed this video, there's definitely something up there that you'll enjoy. In third place is The Avengers, a movie that changed the comic book genre as well as blockbusters in general for the rest of the decade. As soon as it came out, it made a bazillion dollars and it put a bazillion smiles on people's faces, so everyone in Hollywood wanted their own Avengers and nobody could do it nearly as well as Kevin Feige and Marvel Studios. It's a movie for me that I just loved that it takes a pretty straightforward narrative and story and uses that as a way to just set up great scenes between our characters where they have fantastic banter. I think this movie has the best banter of the whole MCU. And as it's the first time they come together, it gets to have a more simplistic third act where it is just our Avengers throwing down on this faceless army of aliens invading, as well as Loki, who gets thrown all about. It does so many things that you only can really do one time, and it does it so well. I just love the fun, the joy, the heroic antics of the third act inside of this film, and it's a movie that really did influence so many movies afterwards. Our runner-up, Logan. If The Avengers was the movie that was just pure joy for two hours, Logan is the film that just dug deep and had some of the richest themes inside of it as it deals with life, loss, regret, redemption, and a deep exploration of death throughout the entire film. In doing so, it gives us probably Hugh Jackman's best performance as Logan Wolverine. It gives us one of Patrick Stewart's best performances of all time. And we get to see this vicious R-rated Wolverine going into berserker mode. It has 
all of it. It's far deeper than most films in this genre, even though I love the fact that most of them are just kind of these popcorn films. This one has the action, the spectacle, but it also has so much emotion, heart, and something to say. And it's such a satisfying conclusion to both Professor X and Logan's stories. But coming in at first place is Avengers Infinity War. Now this is a true event film that just works on so many levels. The story inside of it is a MacGuffin film about everyone trying to track down these Infinity Stones, and by the end of it, our heroes lose, the villain gets the Infinity Stones, and he wins, leading to this truly shocking finale that they went there where half the universe is wiped out instantaneously. And the reason you could do that is because the movie, even though we have all of these characters we've known and loved throughout these years that we get to see together, and it's so much fun to see them together, the movie dedicates so much time to our villain in understanding what drove him mad to think he needed to go on this quest to accomplish this mission. When you put it all together, it's got everything that I want from the genre. You have heroes with great banter and fantastic action sequences. You have a villain who's compelling and interesting while being vile at the same time. There's actual stakes inside of the film where characters die, actions have consequences, and then it just has a slam bang finale that I absolutely love. So it comes in at number one. If you've enjoyed this video, there's more content just like it. You can check out that playlist right up there with my end of 2019 list, comic book movies, disappointing surprises, best of, or you can click on that video right down there. That's my best of the decade list. Thank you so much for watching and keep talking movies too much.